if you would, sir, would you turn to exhibit number two? Are you familiar with that document? Yes. Can you tell the jury what that document is? This is the two-page memo that's been often discussed in this trial that I received uh, on my desk to, to, to look through the subject of this case. Is this the memo that you reviewed that ultimately led to the revocation of Mr. Brown's appointment as deputy chief? Yes. And at that point, was he okay? I never thought this memo would rise to the level of where, where it is risen. I, I, I felt for um, Mr. Nelson. And uh, this police misconduct of the two officers, and then I further read down of what they were charged with. An off-duty traffic accident, flat tires, and excessive overtime. Now mind you, that's six weeks of dealing with it. Um, and now it's, it's, it's blown up to be these different things coming, different memos flying. Let me ask you about the traffic accidents, the overtime, and the flat tires. Did you understand those to be within the scope of authority and responsibility of internal affairs at that time? No. Internal affairs has to operate under some priority. And first, it investigates criminal activity on behalf of police officers. This is something, excessive overtime goes to the command. You know, an off-duty traffic accident goes to the command for internal affairs to be using its best resources when it really doesn't have any resources. With 550 cases backlogged on a traffic accident, a fender bender, if you will, it was nothing, nobody heard it, nothing happened. And, and flat tire and excessive overtime troubled me greatly. Did you terminate Mr. Brown? No, I did not terminate Mr. Brown. I did not fire Mr. Brown. Uh, I removed him from the position. I appointed him from an appointed position. Uh, but I cannot fire Mr. Brown. I don't have the ability to do that under the charter of the city of Detroit and the civil service requirements, but quite honestly, under the overlay bargaining agreements with him. So, no. There's been a lot said about your friendship with Christine B. Yes. Let me start off first by saying, how long have you known Lou B? Lou B, we met with kids. Uh, and what is the nature of your friendship with Luby? Luby's dad, Luby Jr. Luby is Christmas ex-husband is the third. Luby Jr., his sister, uh, Sherry, my mother, my uncles, all went to the same school, grew up together, lived in the same neighborhood. They central high people. And that's that's the nature. We both played for the same pal, little league organization which is the same organization which my children play for now. Uh, Lou Beattie runs uh, one of the teams there. He runs the offense for the team. Uh, my sons play for the team and play for the Boston State Rangers. And subsequent to Mr. Beattie's divorce, have you made friends? I was with him all day Saturday. <laughs> all day Saturday, my son's games. How long have you known Christine Beattie? Since ninth grade. I met Chris in the ninth grade. Uh, you've been about 15 years old, right? At 14 or 15, yes. You say you have a professional relationship as well as a friendship with her. Yes. Um, do you believe, sir, that men and women who work professionally <coughs> do so without a sexual relationship? I absolutely believe that. I think it's, it was pretty demoralizing to her. You have to know her. But it's demoralizing to me as well. My mother is a congresswoman. There have always been strong women around me. My aunt is a state legislator. Um, I, I think it's absurd to assert um, that every woman that works with a man is a whore. I think it's disrespectful not just to Christine Beatty, but to women who do a professional job uh, that they do every single day. And it's also uh, disrespectful to their families as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.